Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to part two in our building a Les Paul kit series. In this video, we're gonna complete the build. We're gonna give you guys some tones and maybe even compare it up against a Gibson Les Paul. Now, if you guys missed part one and all the progress we've made so far, I will put a link to it above right now. You can check it out there. Other than that, let's start phase two of the build. Here we go. All right, you guys, so here's an update of what I did over the weekend. Uh, I put on additional coats onto the back of our neck. If you remember in part one, we did one coat of that wipe on poly. I'll try to kind of move it around in the light so that you guys can see. It's a very satin kind of finish. Very nice, and I buffed it up with uh, the sanding sponge there, a thousand grit, and it just made it very smooth. So it's not sticky at all, which is super important. And there we go. So hopefully you guys can see what kind of finish you know, you could expect if you use that wipe on poly. But yeah, just a very satin look. So depends if you want high gloss or not. I didn't do anything on the headstock other than, you know, the finish. I didn't put a, a decal or logo or anything on there. We're just going to keep it plain. So anyway, the neck is done. It's great. It's finished. We're ready to put on the tuning machines. Now on the body, all I did was the soldering. And thankfully, I can say uh, the downloaded uh, schematics from the solo site was perfect. So we just connected up the three-way toggle on the top, uh, wired the pickups up to the pots and the output jack. All right, you guys, so let's start by installing our cavity covers. I did a quick check and thankfully all the screw holes line up perfectly. So that's nice. You never know when you're doing, you know, a kit build if, you know, they put the screw holes in in the right spot. So there we go. That is the cover for our three-way toggle. And then we will install the main cavity cover. Now there are two sides, so make sure you get the side that kind of has the wide cup for the head of the screw to uh, sit flush in. That way, you know, it won't grab on anything or bug you when you're playing. So all the screws, they actually do sit flush in here, which is kind of nice. With that done, we've got all our electronics completely sealed up, which is great. Our three-way switch is ready to go. Let's put on our speed knobs. This obviously uh, will really complete the look. So I'm gonna try to put my tens all in the same spot so we know if we're running full out or not. And there we go. So, man, looks fantastic, love that. Okay, so let's move on to the neck. All right, you guys, now let's install the tuning machines. Now, as you can see, they're just set in there loosely, but there is a mounting hole you know, to keep each tuning machine in the right spot. So what we're gonna do is put them in. There are six kind of skinnier screws that come with this set. So don't confuse them with, uh, you know, the screws that we used on uh, the back cavity covers. They are different sizes. So make sure you use, you know, the really slim screws for this. So we're just gonna line that up, get them each started so that they don't move, and then we'll install uh, the rest of the hardware on the front. Next up, we'll put the washers on each one of the tuning machines, and then we will use the nuts to tighten them all up. There's one back here, there we go. Okay, then we can slide on the locking nuts there. And that's what's gonna hold the tuning machines tight. It just kind of squeezes, um, you know, the tuning ma machine together. So we'll grab our socket and tighten those up. Now, just like with the pots, you don't wanna tighten these guys up too hard. You will, you know, indent the wood, or if you had like a high gloss finish, you would definitely, you know, the possibility of cracking the finish is there, so just keep them nice and, and firm, you know, without going too crazy. So there we go. That is, you know, what the front face of this will look like. Obviously, we still need to put on our truss rod cover. There's a look at the back. I like that they used sort of a more classic kind of Les Paul style tuning machine for this kit. I think it looks really good. Let's go ahead and install the truss rod cover. Now, honestly, I probably shouldn't be installing this until, you know, I put the strings on and we really, you know, know if I need to uh, access that truss rod. But anyway, here's what it is. Some of the holes seem like they're not drilled quite deep enough and it takes a little bit of force to, you know, get that screw in. So I'm just going to set it up right here. Sorry, off camera and just kind of drive these guys in. So I did notice some of the screws. Uh, thankfully, every single screw hole for like any plastic cover or anything, uh, they always line up really nice but yeah i noticed with some of the tuning machines took quite a bit of force to get the screws in and of course on a kit like this you do have to be careful with the hardware uh, that you don't strip it out so there you go that's kind of what the headstock will look like let's move on and attach it to the body 
Now this is getting exciting. We're getting so close. So here we go. Let's attach the neck to the body. Hard to believe we're at this uh, spot already. Well, you guys, the neck is attached to the body. I think next up, let's put in the strap buttons. Now, as you guys can see, the holes for the strap buttons are pre-drilled, which is always nice. And there's just a little kind of rubber washer that you want to make sure that you put in between the strap button and the body. Other than that, we can just screw that straight in. All right, you guys, so here's a look at our Les Paul kit, nearly completed. So here's a look at the backside. You can see the bolt-on neck there and the cavity covers. Nice, deep, rich stain. Love that. And of course, you got your binding and that beautiful top. And there's a look at the neck. Let's see if that'll focus on that. There you go. So there's the kit. I think I'm going to leave off the pick guard. Love the way it looks just like this. So now we need to put on our tailpiece here and our bridge and some string. So that's the next step. I'm going to get this thing strung up and we'll be back with some tones. All right, you guys, it's time for some tones. Of course, we've got our Les Paul kit right here, ready to rock. And we've got a Gibson Les Paul standard. You guys have seen this on my channel many times. Beautiful guitar. So here we go. There's sort of a look at the differences in shape and size. Very similar. Um, the lower horn, a little bit more angular on the kit. Here's a look at the headstocks. There you guys go. Just so you have, you know, a reference in terms of what they actually look you know, side to side as well. So anyway, I'm going to start by playing the kit first, then we're going to follow up by the Gibson because it's always, you know, difficult to really understand what a guitar sounds like unless you have some sort of reference. So anyway, kit, then Les Paul, here we go. Let's test out some tones. <laughs> So as you guys could hear, the kit had lower output, warmer sounding pickups. Now that's not to say that they sound bad. I think they actually sound really good. So if you like that really warm kind of Les Paul tone, uh, the kit actually delivers on that. So here are my final thoughts on the solo music gear Les Paul kit. Well, 
In the end, this is a pretty cool guitar. Now, kits, as I've mentioned before, don't always save you money, but they always give you a good experience. So whether you're you know, a father wanting to do one with your son or daughter, or you're just somebody who wants to understand guitar better or just take on some projects, uh, a kit guitar is always a rewarding experience. Now, there are a couple things to mention. Number one, when I put the tension of the strings on the bridge, um, the post kind of tilted forward just slightly. Now, this is not a big deal. I've seen that on Epiphone guitars and, and other ones like that, uh, but I did notice it. Now, as you can see, I do have my tailpiece quite high. And the reason for that is to keep a very shallow, you know, breakover angle on the saddles, which will help stabilize your tuning. So if you have persistent Les Paul tunings, uh, tuning issues, one of the things you can do is raise that up so the brake angle over here is quite shallow. So I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see that, uh, but that did happen. Now when you do raise it up, it kind of does torque a lot on there. So that's not going to move, but should mention that. Now the other thing I noticed is there's an ever so slight gap between the neck and the body right there. Really hard to see, it's not a big deal, but those were literally the only two things that I had issues with on this entire build. And they're not really issues, just things that I noticed. So plays really nice. Obviously I need to break the strings in. I need to tweak the intonation to get it perfectly in tune everywhere. As you could hear, the strings were going out a bit because they're fresh. Uh, we just completed the build obviously. So overall, very happy with this kit. Looks great and it was a super fun experience. Thank you guys for coming along uh, on the build. As I mentioned, I will link to this kit in the video description below if you want to go back, watch part one and two, and build along with me. That's always fun as well. So there you guys go. Super happy with the kit. Now, if there's any other build projects or kit guitars that you'd like to see on the channel, just let me know in the comments below. The rest of my information, tab store, t-shirt store, all the gear I use is listed down in the video description below. Other than that, have yourself a great day.